So then we go on to Arctic sea ice, which follows a regular kind of sine wave. It comes and goes with the seasons. There's lots of it during the winter, not so much during the summer. Nothing particularly to worry about in that graph there. Arctic sea ice extent follows a nice regular sine wave curve. It's just very much where it always has been. There's nothing spectacular about that. And what about sea ice extent? Oh, we've heard about so much about that. Here's the record. You've just seen it. If you had a heartbeat as regular as the heartbeat of sea ice extent over the last 30 years, you would be regarded, madam, as a very healthy little planet. <laughs> All of the predictions seem to be about what's going to happen 100 years from now when none of us are going to be around. Uh, Brett from Birkdale, uh, you pop those headphones on so, Brett, you can talk to uh, Lord Monkton. You have a, a question for him? Yeah, I'm just uh, concerned. At the end of last year, they were showing all these images of the North Pole, how there's less ice now than what there ever has been and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I'm with you guys. I don't believe in it, but why do they keep showing these images and are the images true? Well, yes, the images are true. It's just very much where it always has been. Ever since the satellites have been watching, there's been a continuous and quite substantial reduction in ice cover in the Arctic. It's just very much where it always has been. Just in those few weeks during the height of the Arctic summer or the back end of the Arctic summer, it's just very much where it always has been. But there has been a long-run decline in Arctic sea ice. It's just very much where it always has been. I'm Walt Meyer. I'm a research scientist here at the National Soil and Ice Data Center, uh, part of the University of Colorado in Boulder. And I work primarily with uh, satellite remote sensing of sea ice, so studying sea ice from uh, satellite images from space. Dr. Meyer, I'm sure you probably saw some of these recent images of the ice breaking up in the Beaufort Sea, uh, which caused a little bit of a stir uh, around the internet. What can you tell us about that? Is that unusual, or, or what, what are we seeing there? Well, it, it's interesting. It's, it's, a, it's not unusual, and it is unusual. Uh, it's not unusual in the sense that the ice does move around. It, it oftentimes fractures, and cr you get cracks, or as we call them, leads or open water forms, uh, oftentimes these can stretch for many tens of or even hundreds of miles, um, but they're generally very narrow um, and, and kind of sparse, especially in winter time. Uh, this was very unusual in terms of the size and the scope, where you had uh, these vast areas of, of leads and big leads, very wide leads, uh, open water opening up and happening over a very large range uh, of, of area, you know, all the way from kind of the Canadian islands all the way across into Siberia and, and almost up to the North Pole and all the way down to the coast of Alaska. So a really large area and also the extent of the time that, that this lasted. I mean, we, we saw this, it, didn't, it wasn't totally continuous, but really from the beginning of February uh, through the mid middle of March, we saw these events kind of repeatedly happening. Um, and that's also fairly unusual that you would have this kind of continually churning of the ice cover. Uh, generally, these would kind of you get a crack and then it would refreeze or, or close back up again, um, and, and it be and it would be done. Um, but something this long was definitely unusual, and this large is definitely unusual. But what made this event so unusual and so large was that those winds were blowing over ice that is what we call seasonal or first year ice. This is ice that formed just since last September. And that ice is, is fairly thin. It, it might be three, maybe at most six feet thick. Um, whereas in the past, that area would be mostly covered with what we call multi-year ice, which is ice that's been around for several years. And that ice is much thicker. That's on the order of 10 to even upwards of 15 feet thick. We're getting lower and lower summer ice extents on average, uh, and last September 2012 was a record low, a, a re really a record smashing low, um, by far the lowest we had seen in our satellite record, which is 35 years now. It's just very much where it always has been. The vast areas of, where, of open water existed at the end of summer, including in that area, and, and that's then, of course, when winter comes, that freezes up, but that ice is the thinner seasonal first-year ice. We're really seeing extreme melt and a lot of loss of ice of, uh, and, and very low extents at the end of summer. Now, this is something that models have predicted, but what we've seen 
uh, in the last 10 years in particular is that the ice loss rate is much faster than what the models have been indicating. What is the current guess as far as when we might actually see an ice-free Arctic in the summertime? One thing I think we can say with fairly high confidence is that it's sooner than what the models have projected, which was towards the end of this century. Um, I think that the consensus tends to be that we're not going off of a cliff, but things are still moving a lot faster than what we had expected. Uh, the models, the projections just didn't seem to cap have not captured this very rapid positive feedback. And, and, and so we're, we're, we're seeing things changing a lot faster than we thought. If you asked a whole bunch of scientists five years ago and then asked them again today, I think you'd find that that date has been shifting sooner. The ice is so vulnerable now that it's really on its way out. We're going to see a steady downward spiral and be ice free in the Arctic probably 10 years from now is my best estimate. Yeah, if you look at the volume of the Arctic sea ice and follow a curve, that curve goes to zero in 2016. Now, it may not be valid to do that, and I'm kind of being conservative maybe saying 2022 will be when we lose all the Arctic sea ice in summer. But there are some scientists predicting it could happen as early as 2016. Um, you know, estimates range from the next five years to the next 30 years, I would say. And it's probably the best estimate probably be kind of in the middle of that range, maybe around 2030. But there has been a long-run decline in Arctic sea ice. It's just very much where it always has been. But it's been largely offset, though not entirely, by a growth in Antarctic sea ice. Bottom line, is there more or less sea ice globally now than there was 30 years ago? There is less sea ice globally now than there was 30 years ago. Magnitude-wise, the reductions in the Arctic are much bigger than the increases in the Antarctic. The decreases that we've seen in the Arctic uh, far outweigh the increases we've seen in the Antarctic. It's pretty clear that the volume changes in the Antarctic have been almost negligible, very small. We're, we're really at a whole new state for the Arctic system. It really does look like the Arctic has shifted in state. I would almost argue that we might be entering into a new climate state. Um, so it's going to be kind of a, a, a shift uh, that we're already seeing happening. Uh, even five, uh, maybe ten years ago, certainly, I, I would not have uh, guessed that that would be possible, that we would see a, a blue Arctic Ocean uh, in my lifetime. And now it's looking quite likely that that, that will be the case.